Well, good morning, New Hope. Man, well, good morning from online, from your screens. Uh, while I can say that I really miss seeing your faces here, I can also say that I'm just super excited to not have to wear a mask because there's no one in the building here. So uh, for those of you who are at home, you don't have to wear yours either. You're in the comfort of your home. I just invite you to stand with me, sing loud, and let's spend some time in worship this morning.
soften it for your ways, Father, that I may become <laughs> something new, something fresh. Father, I ask that you bring us out of the darkness, you show us your ways, you show us your light. All we want is to be in your presence. screens and set how you're at home already. Um, and there's a video of what's coming up next. Thanks. Good morning. I'm Lacey and I'm the missions coordinator here at New Hope. For the past three years, New Hope has been partnering with an organization called Food for the Hungry 
to help support community-identified projects, send teams, and build ongoing relationships with a small community called Sheo Guatemala. This morning, we have an opportunity to, par to partner with Sheo in a new way. Last year, Guatemala was impacted by two massive storms that have resulted in a long period of rebuilding. Lead Pastor Isaac recently reached out to Food for the Hungry to find out how New Hope could meaningfully give toward the rebuilding effort. Community leaders in Sheo identified a need and Food for the Hungry developed a plan for New Hope to support a chicken raising project. By raising $1,603, we can help the 105 families with children under the age of five in the community to have a source of long-term nutrition. Each family will receive five chickens, starter feed, training on raising chickens, and ongoing support. The families will contribute the materials and labor for building chicken pens. If you feel called to give towards this project, you can do so by going to inewhope.org give and selecting Sheo in the drop-down menu. Next up, Associate Pastor Chris Bowlby will have a few, few more announcements and will share with us a word. Well, good, good morning, New Hope. Thank you for joining us. Uh, we are online only this morning here, but I'm Chris Bowlby. I'm the uh, associate pastor here. And um, as I said, we are online for the second week in a row here. We have had um, a few of our staff members come down sick with COVID-19. And um, we have uh, Isaac and Donya Hovitt, James and Ashley Gerber, and Jennifer King, and um, and other people in our congregation, and um, I'm sure you have people inside of your life that are battling with COVID-19, and, and so um, uh, those on our staff are recovering from that, but still resting up, and we're doing our best to be able to keep people safe, and so that's why we have gone online uh, only for this week, and uh, yeah, I would just invite you to join me in prayer. Lord, we hand all those... Um, God, who are dealing with sickness right now, God, I pray that your spirit would heal them. Lord, we give our people to you, the God who heals. And so, Lord, we ask for your healing touch to be on our staff and uh, our body and, and all of those affected by COVID-19. In Jesus' name I pray. Uh, amen. Amen. Well, uh, next Sunday is Easter Sunday. We've got Good Friday on Friday. We are planning on both of these uh, services being in person, and so we would invite you to sign up for those. You can do that at inewhope.org. We have four service times on, uh, on Sunday morning uh, for you to choose from. Uh, we also have community groups starting back up. I would inv invite you to sign up for those. Those will start um, the, uh, the week after Easter week. And so, um, yeah, get, get signed up for those. Well, if next Sunday is Easter Sunday, that means this morning is Palm Sunday. Uh, this is the week that um, a few days before Jesus is crucified, he rides into Jerusalem to uh, uh, to bring peace. And the people who were there, they understood it in part, or some didn't understand it at all. But Jesus had a plan for peace for the world. Peace between God and man. Peace uh, with his cre creation, with people. Uh, uh, peace with our world. Uh, he had a plan for peace with ourselves. Uh, Jesus had peace. And I long for peace. You see, lately it seems like all there is in this world is conflict or trouble. If you turn on the news, if you have not been living under a rock for the past year, it seems like there is conflict or trouble everywhere. Everybody is arguing about everything. It's masks, it's presidents, it's laws, it's money. I miss the days where we just argued about whether Michael Jordan was the greatest basketball player of all time, or if Michael Jordan was the greatest basketball player of all time. I miss those days. It was so simple. Peace seems so elusive these days. Yet peace is an innate desire in most human beings. We want peace in our relationships. 
We want to be in harmonious and loving relationships with our wives, with our husbands, our sons, daughters, parents. No one longs for conflict. Nobody wants that. We want peace with the nations of the world. No one wants to send their sons or daughters off to war. We want peace inside of our own hearts. It seems as if there isn't a loss of bad news coming out regularly. We want to have peace about our lives, to know that everything is going to be okay. <clears throat> Michael Jackson said, heal the world, make it a better place. John Lennon said, imagine all the people living life in peace. The Black Eyed Peas said, where is the love? Who would have thought I could walk in, uh, work in a song lyric from the Black Eyed Peas? But most importantly, Jesus said, I have told you these things so that you may have peace. Jesus has peace for us today. Lord, we give you this time. As we go to your word, God, uh, we ask for you to speak to us. Your word says, I have told you these thing things so that you may have peace. So God, we ask you to tell us, Lord, speak to our heart your truth so that we may have peace. In Jesus' name I pray, uh, amen. Well, this morning we come to a familiar passage for Palm Sunday. Palm Sunday, celebrated the Sunday before Easter, marks the beginning of what is, what is Holy Week. See, days before his death, Jesus sets in motion events that would lead to his crucifixion. There is no doubt that he knew exactly what he was walking into. That as he rode in on, on a donkey on this day into Jerusalem. He knew that this was going to lead towards his crucifixion. His whole ministry had led to this moment. It was imperative for Jesus to walk this Passion Week out in obedience. So now he walks in obedience towards his mission. Upon entering Jerusalem, he is celebrated by a group of people that were waiting and longing for the Messiah. Like four different portraits, the Gospels of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, inspired by the Holy Spirit and penned by these men, give special focus to different themes. We long for peace. We long for peace and are prone to anticipate peace in the same way that Luke records one, the disciples who thought peace would come when Jesus met their expectation, and two, the Pharisees who thought peace would come when the status quo was retained. We're going to pick it up in Luke 19 here, and all of the scriptures will be on the screen. After telling this story, Jesus went on towards Jerusalem, walking ahead of his disciples. As he came to the towns of Bethpage and Bethany on the Mount of Olives, he sent two disciples ahead. Go into that village over there, he told them. As you enter it, you will see a young donkey tied there that no one has ever ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks, why are you untying that colt? Just say, the Lord needs it. See, all of the gospel accounts besides uh, John describe the scene of Jesus procuring this donkey to ride. It's, it's curious. Did Jesus know that the donkey would would be there? It, it, it sure seems so. You know, some, some commentators note that it, it wouldn't be out of the norm for royalty to, uh, to, to commandeer possessions or property for, for royal use. What is more royal than the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords? The Lord has use for it. In any case, we can see it is clear that Jesus is in authority. He is walking into this moment with, with purpose. Scripture goes on. So they went and found the colt, just as Jesus had said. And sure, sure enough, just as they were untying it, the uh, owners asked uh, them, Why are you untying that colt? And the disciples simply replied, The Lord needs it. So they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their garments over it for him to ride on. As he rode along, the crowd spread out their garments on the road ahead of him. And when he reached the place where the road started down the Mount of Olives, all of his followers began to shout and sing as they walked along, praising God for all the wonderful miracles they had seen. 
blessings on the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in highest heaven. But some of the Pharisees among the crowd said, Teacher, rebuke your followers for saying things like that. He replied, If they keep quiet, the stones along the road would burst into cheers. So let's notice the two groups of people that were present on this day, the disciples and the Pharisees. Each of these groups longed for peace. First, the disciples. For them, peace means Jesus should meet my expectations of who he should be. See, while the crowds worship Jesus as a prophet and a miracle worker, Jesus' disciples, they worshiped him not as just a miracle worker, but as their king. The crowds spread their cloaks out, but Luke points out it was his followers or disciples that were worshiping him and praising him. Luke includes the disciples quoting Psalm 118, which says here, uh, Bless the one who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. Other gospels include this quote from the Psalms, but Luke is the only one to add the word king to the disciples' proclamation of Jesus. See, he was not just a great prophet sent to heal. He was their ruler. He was their king and their Messiah. Jesus had arrived to deliver his people. They longed for peace, and Jesus was here, their king. Each Passover, Jews would flood Jerusalem. Uh, to celebrate and long for deliverance from uh, oppression. As they celebrated Passover, this is the remembrance of God's deliverance from Pharaoh and Egypt. They longed for deliverance from Rome. They longed for a Messiah who would free them from the grips of Rome. Unfortunately, Holy Week would be very disappointing to the, to the disciples. They would all desert Jesus in his final moments. Even Peter, who proclaimed, I will die for you, was nowhere to be found. For the disciples, peace meant overthrowing Rome. <clears throat> Has God ever disappointed your expectations of him? Have you ever had an unanswered prayer, a circumstance that disappointed your plans? Any unresolved relational conflict? See, I have seen God answer so many prayers inside of my life. He has been so faithful. I have had relationships mended. I have seen God provide in ways that I would have never imagined. God has been faithful to me. But also, I have, I, I have some deep places that the Lord has had to restore. I've had unanswered prayers for healing. I have relationships that were, that were never reconciled. I have prayed for my stutter to be healed thousands of times, and it has yet to take place. I had someone pass away this, this last year, and I never really got to experience reconciliation that I had been praying for over a decade for. It didn't happen. It was an unanswered prayer. As I encounter the disciples' excitement to worship Jesus when they thought they understood, and also their preceding disappointment when he didn't live up to, to their expectations, I can identify with them. But friends, hear this. Jesus deserves to be worshipped on Palm Sunday just as much as he does on Good Friday. We worship Jesus at all times. <clears throat> we miss out on the peace of God when we don't allow God to be God We've said it here many times. God is God and we are not. He gets to operate and do as he wishes. He gives. He takes away. He guides and directs. He is Lord. That's who God is. He had much better in mind than deliverance from home, from Rome. He had in mind deliverance from sin and death. It was a bigger plan than, than they could ever think of. If God only meets our expectations, he is much too small. I join with the prayer of the apostle Paul found in the book of Ephesians. He says this, Now all glory to God who is able, through his mighty power at work within us, to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or think. And for the disciples here on this day, we could add or expect to the Pharisees. For them, peace meant not upsetting the status quo. 
Scripture says, but some of the Pharisees among the crowd said, Teacher, rebuke your followers for saying things like that. He replied, if they keep quiet, the stones along the road would burst into cheers. <clears throat> the Pharisees, they held lots of power in the Jewish community. Along, uh, along with the Sadducees, they were the other religious leaders that were more sympathetic towards Rome. They made up the, they made up the Sanhedrin, or the Jewish high court. The Pharisees developed a tradition of strict interpretations of the Mosaic law. For them, obedience was handed down through a very detailed set of, of practices. This unwavering understanding of the Mosaic law, it, it, it actually put them at, at odds with, with Jesus on multiple occasions. Jesus clashed with the Pharisees over both marriage and divorce, found in Matthew 19, paying taxes, which is in Luke 20, punishment for infidelity, John 8, what is lawful to do on the Sabbath, Luke 6, cer ceremonial hand washing, Mark 7, and the forgiveness of sins, Matthew 9. He re rebuked both of them, uh, or both through parables and directly. For the Pharisees to receive the peace that Jesus had on, on offer on that Palm Sunday, they would have to give up their status quo. For them to receive Jesus as he was, as Messiah and Lord, they would no longer be the experts of religious law. They would have to change not just their understanding of God, but their practices as well. Jesus isn't demanding. Hear this. Jesus isn't just demanding a mental assent where we just agree, where we agree with the teachings of Jesus, but a wholesale life change. For us to follow Jesus, for the Pharisees to follow Jesus on that day, status quo was blown out the window. It required a wholesale life change. It's easy to write off the Pharisees, to not see ourselves in their shoes. As I'm reading through these, I, I regularly identify with other people and, and think, man, these terrible Pharisees. But Luke draws our attention to these men who thought they knew it all. Too often in my own confidence of my own understanding, I skip over allowing Jesus to speak into the deep recesses of my heart. Do I think I know God more than others? Do I think I, I have my personal piety all together? Am I unwilling to allow God to redirect any area of my life and any understanding that I might have about him or this world? If I answer yes to any of these, I might be closer to a Pharisee than I am really comfortable with. After the tri tri triumphant entry, Jesus looks out uh, over Jerusalem. He says this, But as he came closer to Jerusalem and saw the city uh, ahead, he began to weep. How I wish today that you of all people would understand the way of peace. But now it is too late, and peace is hidden from your, from your eyes. <sighs> This Holy Week, we have a special opportunity to receive the entry or the re-entry of Jesus into our lives, not as we want or even as we think we might need, but we receive him as he desires. Peace is available even when God disappoints our expectations. Peace is available even when the status quo is upset Peace is found when we build our lives on Jesus. Matthew 11 says this, Then Jesus said, Come to me, all of you who are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, let me teach you, because I am humble and gentle at heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy to bear, and the burden I give you is light. Rest. Easy yoke, gentle, light burden. That sounds like peace to me. Well, here are some questions for you to discuss with your community group this week. All of our groups are, are online only this week, so I would encourage you to be flexible and tune in. Check with your facilitator to, to find out how to get a Zoom link or, or however your group is choosing to meet. 
First, read Luke 19, 28 through 40. These are the scriptures that we read today. Two, do you have peace in your life right now? As you do an, an inventory of, of your heart and your life, do you have peace? Do you have peace with God? Spend some time with the Lord and, and, and allow him to speak to some areas that maybe you're not at peace with God. Two, do you have peace in your relationships? And third, do you have peace in your heart? Uh, the worry and anxiety of this, of this world is so prevalent. We live in an anxious world. It is our morning cup of coffee to sip the anxiety of this world through our news and social media and the events it's hard to avoid. And so sit before the Lord and, and ask, do you have worry and anxiety? And confess that to your group. They would love to be able to pray for you for any of these. And third, do you identify with one of these two groups? And it's okay. If, I, I mean, we all want to identify with with the disciples, but the disciples got it wrong. They only knew in, in part. And so, uh, man, ask, ask the Lord uh, for, for clarity on that. And if you do, how so? Well, Holy Week is a fresh invitation to reorient our heart towards the revelation of Christ once again. Each Palm Sunday, each Good Friday, and each Easter, we remember that the death and resurrection is not just a historical event, but it becomes a living memorial to the extent that we are willing to receive Jesus as he is. He is King. He is Messiah. And he is Lord. Well, God, we, we thank you for this time. And God, we ask that as you've spoken to our hearts through your holy word, God, and as we um, think about these things throughout our week, God, we ask that God, you would allow us uh, to be transformed, God. You would give us mind of things uh, we might need to be able to do or how we might be reconciled or, or repent or confess or ask for prayer, Lord. God, we just, we want to be more like you. In Jesus' name I pray, uh, amen. Well, thank you so much for joining us. I would encourage you to get signed up for Good Friday and Easter S Sunday, and we will see you again soon. Thank you. Thank you.